Here we are. We got the Hall of Fame announcement from Derek Jeter dropping last night with GNT Sports Talk. I'm Julian Gillardi. I'm Bobby Thompson. And we got a lot of other stuff that's happened as well. Along with Derek Jeter getting elected, we have Larry Walker making the Hall of Fame. That's the big takeaways. Marcelo Zuna also signed yesterday, and the Mets hired a manager. Yes, they did. Luis Rojas, they hired. As we all know, what happened with uh, Carlos Beltran being fired. Didn't even manage a single game. And they go with Luis Rojas. Um, all I know is that he did play in the major leagues. There's not really much on him. Is that the Mets wanted to get this done right away. This comes a week after the firing of Carlos Beltran. So they fill that manager void. Uh, with pitchers and catchers reporting literally in three weeks. Mm. They finally filled the void to try to get rid of the distraction. It's That's out the window now. Now it's uh, Luis Rojas calling the shots now for the New York Mets. So this will be interesting to see how the Mets do with this guy. Yeah, Rojas managed him in single and double. He was a coach of the team last year, so they – did it internally. They're the first of the three teams that fired their managers. Alex Cora has since been fired since we last appeared in the show as well. Obviously, the Astros, AJ Hinch, we discussed live last week. So, all this stuff's going on now. The Mets filled their void. The Astros and Red Sox are still looking. We flip back to Hall of Fame talk, and obviously, we saw my reaction to what happened with Derek Jeter. And by now, everyone knows that's watching this that Jeter did not get the full vote. It was not unanimous. One person out of 397 decided to leave him off the ballot. I don't want to dwell on that. Jeter basically got, well, he did get the most votes of any position player ever, so it was still good. It's just one person that's ruined all the fun, exactly. I mean, I don't know why. I talked about it. I want to hear your reaction to it. I mean, it's, it's pretty ridiculous that, you know, Derek Jeter, arguably one of the most respected baseball players ever, for everything he's brought to the game, the guy was just a complete team player. He was a game changer. He was clutch. Anytime you needed a hit, he would get it for you. Anytime you needed a big play in the field, he would do it for you. He wasn't a guy who, who opened his mouth. He let his play do his talking. That's what I think people around baseball like about him. He knew he was great, and he was. Arguably one of the best shortstops to ever play this game. But he never flaunted it. He never bragged about it. He never went about it in a cocky manner. He went it with class. You even talk about this with Boston. Boston fans don't boo Derek Jeter. When he, his final season, he was getting cheered all over the place. I think, you know what, out of 397 people, one person thought he didn't deserve to be unanimously voted in. To me, that's asinine. That's foolishness. It's, it's just not a good situation. I don't like it. Um, but you know what? That's not, that doesn't take away. Derek Cheetah is the first ballot Hall of Famer, and he proved that. All his accolades, five-time World Series champion, 34, over 3,400 hits, career batting average over 300. I, I remember 310. 310. Yeah, it was 314 for the longest time. Yeah, but last week yeah, it was okay. So 310. Ending, but... but Look at all he's done for not only the Yankees franchise, but for baseball. So the one thing we could all say is we tip our caps like his, like his nephew did on his last game. You tip your cap to him with respect. The captain, Derek Jeter, the, great, the greatest shortstop in Yankee history, one of the greatest players in baseball history, and now he's going to be exactly where he belongs, enshrined in Cooperstown at the Baseball Hall of Fame. Congrats, Derek, and thank you for everything you have done, not only for the Yankees, but for baseball. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I'm going to get into some more stats. You gave us a bit outlier, and then I want to go into theories about the person not voted for Jeter, but I want I don't want to do that now. I just want to kind of put on the positive stuff for now. So he was a 14-time All-Star. We know about the five-time World Series. He was an All-Star Game MVP, World Series MVP, five Gold Gloves Rookie of the Year. All his home runs were second all-time in the playoffs. His batting average was 310, like we said. His runs were first for shortstops, 1,923. Amongst all-fame shortstops, 260 home runs second. 
to offensive war in 96 seconds. 200 hits, it's the most all-time in playoff history. 302 total bases, I believe that's fourth. 20 home runs, third. 61 RBIs is actually fourth. Then his extra base hits, his, his doubles is 32, his first. I mean, he's just a phenomenal player, especially in the playoffs. And to me, for someone else to go for, it doesn't make any sense. But the all-time hits are there, the average. He wasn't really a big power guy, but he, he was phenomenal. Can we get the RBIs and stolen bases? We had 1,300 RBIs and stolen bases, 350. He also set the Yankees, Yankees record for hits. Stolen bases he has. And he also has the most hits at the old Yankee Stadium. So those are some significant records he has. And he's in the league class of Yankees that are in the Hall of Fame and just played with the Yankees. So he's got company with Mantle, Ford. He's got Billy Dickey. He's got Luke Garrett, Earl Combs, Joe DiMaggio, Phil Rizzuto, Yogi Berra. All these people have just played with the Yankees in the Hall of Fame. So... It's an excellent class to be in. He's going to be first ballot, 99.7%. So, all right, I've, I've painted all the accolades. I think Bobby's done a good job as well. So, let's get to theories now. Who didn't vote for him and why? Maybe some schmuck from Boston, maybe. I don't know who thought it was being funny. I mean, I don't know. I just don't understand who would... Do it's that cheater. I, yeah, I just don't get it. I just don't. Uh, I don't understand it. Really, for real, it just doesn't make a lot of sense to me why somebody w- will just do that to Derek Jeter. Like, what has he done to not deserve a vote? That's what I don't get. Yeah, this whole Hall of Fame process is flawed to me. How the writers vote. Now you have some people revealing it, but everyone's not revealing it. People can say anonymous. There's rumors going out and around. That in potentially two weeks we may find out who this voter is, but until then they could possibly say hey, and if that doesn't happen, then we'll never know. And that's not right to me because that person deserves to be looked at for the credentials. There's also something I don't know if you heard this, but did you hear that Brad Penny and JJ Putz got Hall of Fame votes? No, really? Yeah, some clown, and that's exactly what that is. But Brad Penny and JJ Putz as Hall of Famers, <laughs> and they somewhat did it vote for Derek Jeter, so. What know, does that tell you? I don't know if it's the same person, but maybe two ballots need to be evaluated, three ballots, but, like, I can't understand this at all. Like, how does someone take ten people on this ballot and not more deserving than J.J. Putz or Brad Penny? <laughs> That's funny. That's really funny. <laughs> I just can't believe it. I heard that today on the way home, and it was just really baffling. The Penny one I heard, but I did not know about J.J. Putz. I mean, J.J. Yeah, so let's think, yeah, I mean, it's absolutely ridiculous. The guy's a scrub. Let's look up his numbers and see how bad he was. Holy crap. I didn't mean to insult him, but like, JJ Putz, he played for 11 years. His ERA was 308. He was 37 and 33. He had 13 wins above replacement. He was totally a Hall of Famer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't um, think he had any saves. And Actually, he, he had 189. But. And his vote is deserving more than Derek Jeter. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. Imagine it was the same ballot that did that. That would really get me if that's how, it, how this went down. Yeah. I wouldn't put it past the... Uh, <laughs> that's just... Uh, I, J.J. Putz and Brad Penny. I understand Brad Penny, but why? Not even. But. Not J.J. Putz. <laughs> yeah. It's had, just... Uh, what a 13 uh, war. Like, oh my God. Like, Jeter 72.4 war. I don't get it. I don't get it at all. And then we got to talk about the rest of this ballot as well. We'll talk about some stuff. What, what do you think of Larry Walker getting in? He just gets by at 76 percent. He's the person that will be joining Terry Cheetah. Yeah. Then we'll go through the rest of the ballot. I thought this was great and it was well deserved for Walker. So, what do you think? Yeah, well deserved and definitely loved his SpongeBob outfit he had yet mm-hmm. yesterday. Big fan. So, uh, definitely well deserving. Great player for the Expos. Back in the day, definitely well deserved. Every player that was Derek Jeter and Larry Walker, deserving of this honor. It's a great time in baseball. It's going to be very, very fun to watch them and their speeches. Can't wait to see that. But you know, <clears throat> Larry Walker, he beats out all the other people who were on the ballot. And you know what? Well deserving too, because you know it, it was just, it was about time. Yeah, it was his last year. He did a lot of great things. His MVP season really stands out to me. 
He, and this was in 1997. He had 366 at 49 homers, 130 RBIs. I don't care what ballpark you're playing at. That's pretty significant numbers to me. So, and in three seasons, he had a 350 average in the stretch of three seasons. He also had um, seven gold gloves. He had five all-star appearances, three silver sluggers, three batting titles, 72.7 war. His lifetime batting average was 313. It's on base 400, slugging over 560. His home runs 383. The only knock against him is that he wasn't really healthy consistently. He really lost a lot of time to the injury. I feel like he could have potentially had 3,000 hits, but not all the time lost. He mainly spent his career in Colorado and Montreal. And at Montreal, well, mainly Colorado, obviously. With Montreal, they said they get some consideration for the hat he would wear, but he decided to wear the Rockies hat, which just seems very fitting to me. And he only played in just under 2,000 games. And I'm looking at this thing. I don't, he never played 162 games. The most he played in the season was 153, 140, 140, 127, 130. He just seems to always be dealing with injuries. I guess he can only fully go through the full seasons. Yeah, uh, I <clears throat> I didn't realize how how uh, how injured he really was. Wow, that's yeah. uh, it, definitely the injuries did play a factor in him not getting three thousand hits. I think that if, yeah, it. absolutely, no no question, no question about that. But he is definitely well deserving of this. The fact that it's his last year he got on, uh, I tip the cap. I'm I'm happy for him because you know what, he's definitely well deserving. I hate when injuries really derail a career that could be so much better than what it was. And he still had a great career, too. It was outstanding, and people used course fields against him and the fact that he didn't have the numbers as much as everyone else, but the 313 batting average speaks for itself. I think that's a very well put stat for why he's in there because that's very consistent. They hit that well for that long. It's really incredible. We played 17 years, although they weren't full, obviously, like we outlined. So I'm happy for him as well. He was making a joke. He was like the B side to Derek Jeter. Like he's going to be like in the background. Like everyone's going to forget about him and all that. But we won't forget about you, Larry. You're a little legend. Yeah, absolutely. So we go through the rest of this ballot. And I got to get your take on Kurt Schilling not making it again. How do you feel? 70%. He was right there. He, he was on the cusp again, and he did not make it. I mean... You know what? He had a great career, too. Who could forget his uh, bloody sock in Boston? Oh, I try to. He won a World Series with the uh, Diamondbacks against the Yankees in mm. 2001. Um, you know what? He's going to get there. He, he was just – he was this short. Seven, what do you need? 75 votes, you said, I think? Five votes. 75%. Away. 75%. He got 70%. Me. He was 5% away from getting into the Hall of Fame. Yeah, right there. He will be there. He will get in. Unfortunately for him, it just wasn't his year this year. But his career speaks for itself. He was a great Diamondback. He was a great Red Sox. Won World Series with both teams. Can't take that away from him. He, he had a great, illustrious career. He will, I, I'm going to tell you this right now, he will make it within the next two years, in my opinion. He will. He will get up there. And you know what? It's... It, Five percent. You know what? Next year, that five percent, I think he'll get it. No, I think I really do. Yeah. I I personally think yeah. next year, mm-hmm. Kurt Schilling will be in the class of two thousand and twenty-one, being inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame. Yeah, bro, a hundred percent. His ERA in the postseason was lights out. He had two-two. He was just <clears throat> outstanding when it came time to get it done. And Kurt Schilling just. 11 and 2 as well, and you, you you mentioned the big wins and everything he had against us for most times. So those two World Series came at our expense, sadly. That's why I've always not, I've always held a grudge against him. I don't really care about all the stuff he's getting into now. Well, you, everyone's I think making too much of like his opinions and political stuff. I think like people are like holding well, certain things against him. Like his should have been, he should have been in a while ago. I don't even like him, but I'm just like trying to see I mean, what's going on here. His his political views are his. Like, I thought it was funny his, at first. I mean, the way he feels politically shouldn't affect him getting into the Hall of Fame, in my opinion. It's it's America. It's freedom of speech. He could he could say whatever the hell he wants to. Uh, if that's the way he feels politically, that's what I'm saying. I mean, he's not saying anything harmful, in my opinion. I really don't think. Um, <clears throat> but I, I if that's the reason why he, he didn't get 5%, I think that's a bit sad. 
you know, like for real, come on. You're gonna really de- you're gonna really derail the guy from another year from being in the Hall of Fame because of stuff he thinks politically, like how he feels about politics. Come on, like don't don't like disrespect a great career of Kurt Schilling's. And like you said, I'm not a big fan of him either. I respect him, not respect for what he did for baseball. Yeah, I actually hate him. But, but well, <laughs> yeah, he was so tough to go against when he was on. But uh, no, I, I just think that's kind of sad if that's the reason why if people are complaining not voting for him that's kind of sad to me i don't see what else it would be i mean it's uh, he only had 216 wins his era was around three five but like you factor in the playoff performances that like should push all that stuff up and he was in an era where people were using steroids and all that so very hard to pitch and one of the best pitchers in the era so i mean yeah it's it's, it's i don't like getting into this but it is political to me. I feel like he would have been in by now. I also there's also an issue with him being off ESPN. It just seems like he has a sour reputation around the baseball circles for some reason. You know how ESPN got rid of him and all that. Yeah. I just feel like people are just like talking down and almost, and it's just like affecting some of the voters' opinions maybe. Yeah. I I mean, still, I mean, if it's a bit sour around baseball, I understand if he kind of burns some bridges. I definitely that. think so. I, I still think you know what you gotta respect what he did what he did on the diamond and on the mound for real. I think the, and he de- he deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. It, 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 there's no ifs ands or buts about it. With that being said, I agree. Next year, I think that'll get it done. Yeah. I think he'll be across the finish line next year. Mm-hmm. Now we have a much more controversial topic than him even Bonds and Clements. We gotta mm-hmm. get to these two. So Clements, sixty one percent, not good enough. Barry Bonds, 60.7. And I know exactly why he was under Clements, and it has to do with our buddy John Heyman. No, let's hear it. Okay, well, you saw Heyman reveal the ballot that he voted for Bonds and not Clements. Yeah. So Bonds ends up getting one less vote than Clements. Oh, wait, actually, no, this theory doesn't work because Bonds got one less vote. So Heyman did mess up something, though, like the balance is off, but it's not entirely his fault because... He voted for Bonds and not Clemens. I mean, some two other people did it the other way. <clears throat> well, uh, which I find interesting. Well, leave it up to John Heyman to throw some uh, <laughs> some controversy in there. But here's the way I see it. Um, people may disagree with me on what I'm about to say, and you have every right to feel this way. But this is just personally the way I feel. Uh, I don't think Barry Bonds deserves to be in the Baseball Hall of Fame. Um, Damn. I, I don't I, I just think the guy's a cheater. He's his everything he's done in my opinion. You know what? When he when he first got into baseball, he was fast. He's a what was he a 30 30 guy? He was yeah, a 40 40. 40 40. There we go. 40 home runs, 40 stolen bases and then out of nowhere he blows up like a Macy's Day balloon. <laughs> <clears throat> and just as is power, home runs, but he always was a home run hitter. But not to this extent. And it's quite obvious the guy's a cheater. Um, I, I respect what he did for baseball, how he played. But you know what? In my opinion, he's people who take steroids and are proven do not deserve. Well, there's, well honestly, you know what? There's never been really much with Barry Bonds. It's just what you see. There's never been like a definitive <clears throat> explanation. However, I do feel like if you took steroids, you don't deserve to be in the Hall of Fame. That's cheating. You're, uh, you had a, a big, huge advantage over people who are not taking who are not taking steroids. I'll give you an example. Like Sammy Sosa used a cork bat. That's an <laughs> a advantage, and that's another guy who I really don't feel deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. But 13%, everyone else agrees with you. Yep, that's just me. But but with Barry Bonds, like I respect what he's done for the game, but I I just don't feel he deserves to be in the Hall of Fame now. On the other hand, with Roger Clemens, between the two, I'm torn between the two, but I'd rather vote Roger Clemens in. I'm not trying to be biased because he was a Yankee pitcher, but in my opinion, I just don't see definitive evidence that Roger Clemens cheated. To this day, I really don't. I mean, it's... I, I don't get it. I just never, even back in the day when they had those court hearings and all that, I just didn't see any definitive evidence that Roger Clemens took steroids or HGH in that standard. So with, with 
that's the way I feel about steroid users. You don't deserve to be inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame with players who set the ground before you, who did this, who weren't taking performance-enhancing drugs, even though it wasn't around back then, but did it naturally, and that's the way it should be. And that's just the way I feel. I don't think you take steroids, you're barred from the Hall of Fame. That's your penalty, in my opinion. That's all I'm going to say about that. I'm just saying. I think a little differently about it, and you know, but it's just because to me, I don't know who did and who didn't do it that's in there. Like, I don't trust Piazza. Be- I think Piazza bag when Pat Rodriguez all did steroids, in my opinion. And I think there's some proof that they did. It's not, it's not exactly concrete, but there are reports and a bunch of things. The same thing with Roger Clemens, honestly. He had reports. Like, there's no Clemens is way less superior than Bonds, but I think, he, I think there's a lot of, I think he did do it ultimately. I think there's a lot of fire around that smoke just because I don't think everything would just be there at grassman straws with all this. He also had injury issues. He he was good later in his career, which is hard to do sometimes, and he, he bulked up and everything. Not as, as obvious as Barry Bonds, and it's tough to say exactly because we weren't old enough to really observe it as well as we could see things now. That's why it's an interesting debate to me. But I think you got to put both of them or none of them in my opinion. That's why I was talking about Heyman doing that. You know, how we split it up, <laughs> and I guess you would do that too, except the other way of hanging. So that's interesting. But I just feel that they're above the other guys that like didn't on the border, like Sammy Sosa. I don't believe was a Hall of Fame player if he didn't have help. Like he, he had a lot of evidence of cheating. It's very obvious what Sosa did, and he was probably cheating for most of his career, if I had to guess. And then um, you had who else were we talking about? Sosa was in the mix. Bonds. Well, McGuire obviously got, he was way off, so he never even came close. Manny Ramirez is an interesting one. How do you feel about Ramirez and Gary Sheffield? They, those are two <coughs> borderline guys. Sheffield had 30%, Manny had 28 so they're both battling to try to make it. And I'm really surprised Jeff Kent didn't get more love on this. I really don't understand Jeff Kent. Hey, he was under 28%. Omar Pascal, 52.6. I don't agree with that at all. He's going to end up making it. I just don't see him as a Hall of Fame player, really. His offense wasn't there. I know his defense was good. Scott Rowland at 35, and Billy Wagner at 31. I think they'll both get there eventually. Billy Wagner definitely he was a great uh, closing pitcher in baseball. He really was. Um, in regards to Manny and Sheffield, yeah, I'm curious about uh, those. Manny Ramirez, you know what? You respect what the guy does, but no, I don't think he is a Hall of Famer. He's going to have a tough case. And Sheffield, for me, is up in the air. It really is. 30%, wow. Because Jerry Sheffield, in my opinion, was a great hitter. It really was. The numbers are there for him. The problem with the steroid speculation is it's from the cloud for him as well. Yeah. He just had over 500 home runs. He was close to 3,000 hits. He hit. Almost, he hit over 290 for his career. So, like, the numbers are there to put him in there. Oh, yeah, but, a lot of, that was really good numbers for a power hit. Wow. Yeah, they just, he was, you know, but the thing is, if he didn't have help, does he have the Hall of Fame resume? I would say probably not because he's pretty close even with the, with what he has now, honestly. But I don't know. It's really speculative. The Mitchell report I saw today, again, that Sheffield was, in fact, on it, and, it's, and he did most likely use steroids while he was on the Yankees. Almost positive. How many players were on that Mitchell report? I didn't look through all of it, but... It was over 200, something like that. I saw the Yankees had 26 guys on it. Um, yeah, Clement, Giambi, a, few, a bunch of other people, but I'm not going to really go into that right now. So you think, yeah, I guess they're on the borderline. How do you, who, how, how do you feel about Andrew Jones making all of fame? I like him. He's at Andrew 20%. Jones. He's at 20%. That's, He's that. got a big climb. That's putting in my way. Yeah, huge climb, definitely. But I, I think within time he'll get, within a couple of years he'll get there. Yeah. Definitely he's, worthy. He's still in the early stages. How about Todd Helton at 29? Absolutely. Absolutely, Todd Helton. He was a great he, player. Yeah, he was pretty good. I think so too. Absolutely. I, I couldn't agree more with that one. And then uh, you didn't give, what do you think about the scout? Up in the air for me. I just don't like, I don't get it really. I guess it's just like a defensive thing. I don't watch him play as much. Maybe there's something I'm missing. But like the war is only 42. Like that's so low for a Hall of Fame. And I'm not like strictly driven the war, but that's just like an outlook of like the impact. He didn't have any impact on the game on offense, really. 
Like, no. he, he, he was just like a slap hitter that stole bases. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it, that's why it's up in the air for me. I mean, yeah. If, if you don't win World Series and you're not getting 3,000 hits, you're not stealing no, all these bases, and all that that, how are you going to make the Hall of Fame? Yeah, I don't know. But we, we'll, we'll move on from that. I think we spent a good time in the Hall. How do you feel about Ozuna to the Braves? And what do you think about oh, Castellanos? Okay, Ozuna to the Braves, as we all know, signed a, last night signed a one-year $18 million deal with the Atlanta Braves to play for them. Uh, great signing. A lot of money, great signing, but like you said today, next year, uh, this basically, in my opinion, is a prove it deal for him. And who next year, I think you're right. He's going to get hella paid next year, in my opinion. You were absolutely right on that one. Uh, <clears throat> last night when that broke, I was actually, um, I wasn't really shocked with that. Really, I know the Braves needed somebody, and they were interested. Really, they were one of the finalists, and they finally got it done after the past couple weeks of trying to work out something. But in regards to uh, Castellanos, I'm, I think he stays with the Cubs. I do. I think they really need him, and I think he really plays well with them. I, 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 just, I just see it's, it's beneficial to both parties to stay. Yeah, well, I'm gonna, I'll add some stuff on the Zuna the Braves. I think it's a very good pairing. 29 homers last year, 89 RBIs. Hit just 240. His wins above replacement, 2.2. So it was a little bit of a down year for Ozuna, I would say. But he, you put him in that Braves lineup, and but like you said, they really needed somebody. They whiffed on Donaldson, so that was a big miss for them. Yep. And a lot of people thought he was going to end up going back there. I'm also really curious why the Cardinals didn't get Ozuna. It seems like a big whiff to me because they well, they traded away Jose Martinez, so they're already losing hitters. And then uh, will they make a play for Aaron Otto? Maybe we'll get to that later. But Ozuna, he played in 130 games. He also missed time, so there's definitely room for him to be better with the Braves next year. I'm trying to get a look at this Braves projection for next year, see what it looks like with him in it. Let's see if they updated this. How do you think the Braves are going to be now with him? How do you think it helps? Well, how do you think it impacts him for next year? I think it. I think he helps them tremendously. Just see, just I know his uh, wins above replacements down two point two is really low, but I think it, last year was you know even twenty nine homers, eighty nine RBIs is still in my opinion a pretty good season. But and he missed it, thirty games too. Well, yeah, there we go. That's that's another. So, I, you know what, this year, if he could stay healthy, he's going to definitely help the Braves. The Braves are a, sl- a good team, and he just made them a lot better, definitely. That's a big sign for them. One year, $18 million in baseball is nothing. He didn't spend a lot. I know it's eighteen mil over one year, but you know what? He's playing for a contract, and like we said, next year he's going to get a big, bigger contract. That might be one of the big fishes next year in uh, free agency. Yeah, he's swayed to in the middle of the lineup. You're going to have Acuna, Dansby Swanson, and you're going to have Marcakis. You're going to have Darno, Freeman, Abilis. I mean, they have players in the Camargo potential, but I think he's more of a bench guy. So I had the line before me. My phone just died. So unfortunately, I was really, it looked really good too, honestly. You guys could take my word for it. The Braves lineup is stacked. The Braves lineup is stacked. I'm full up right now. Yeah, so. And I actually looked up the scale. He has more hits than I realized, but he played 24 seasons. He was like 2,877. I mean, he was close to 3,000, but it took forever. I mean, I respect the grind and hustle. Honestly, you know what? If he gets in, whatever. I mean, I, he's not. He wouldn't be my first choice, but it's fine. Yeah. I mean, um, it is what it is. Yeah, I'm trying to. Uh... You could just type in Braves 2020 projected lineup. That's how I did it. And you look at the sporadic thing. Well, while you're doing that, I'll talk about Castellanos, and I've been saying this the whole time. I think the Giants are a mystery team for Castellanos, and Cubs are still in play from that thing I saw the other day. And then the Rangers, I think, is where it's going to end up happening now because that's a team to me that needs to make a signing. There's no free agents left. Uh, they have. missed out on the trades. You have it? I have it. Okay. All right, so with the Braves' projected lineup, it would be uh... – Leading off, uh, Ronald Okuna. Yeah. Second, Ozzy at was it Albies? Abilas. Abilas. Yeah. Uh, Freddie Freeman. Third, the Power. cleanup spot is Ozuna. Mm-hmm. Nick Markakis, Travis Darnold, De Arnold, uh, Dansby Swanson, and Joni Camargo. Okay, yes, not bad. That's good. I and like then, that a lot. And their starters, Mike Sirocco, 
uh, Cole Hamels, wow, Mike Farnholtz, uh Max Freed, yeah. and Sean Newcomb. Okay, yeah, the Braves this team's looking, not bad. The Braves are looking pretty solid. In the bullpen, they retained Shane Green and uh, Martin from the, the Rangers last year. I think they uh, actually check. Does, can you see the bullpen in there? Hold on. I think they added something. Oh, they added Will Smith. That's right. Oh, the Braves are looking solid. He should be their closer, honestly. Yeah, they do have the, they have. Melanson, Green, Will Smith. Oh, wow. Dan, Darren O'Day. Mm -hmm. They wow. got people back there now. Wow. The Braves might win the NL East. Yeah, I, I agree. I can <laughs> see them. Damn. They, they're, sleepy. they're sleepy good. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's going to be a good season for the Braves. They, they could surprise a lot of people. Wow. Yeah, they might make a run in the National League because the Dodgers haven't added anything at all that's significant. No, they haven't done anything. <laughs> the Cardinals have taken a huge step back. The Brewers are going in complete reverse. The Cubs are kind of in the floundering state as well. <laughs> Talking about all these trades, they haven't added a thing either. And you look at, I mean, the Phillies are up and coming. The Nationals are still going to be a threat, obviously. The Mets are always, you never know what's going to happen with them. But they have some good pitching still. they got a few hitters. I mean, it's going to be an interesting year in the National League. Yeah, it definitely will be. Absolutely. You know what? You know, the Dodgers not doing anything really derails them, and a lot of other teams did a lot more. And you know what? Maybe the NL won't be so one-sided now. Maybe yeah. there could be a lot of some teams that surprise you. It's, you never know. Because now the AL is one-sided. We all know that. Yeah, the so, power is shifted. So with that... um We'll see. The, what we just saw from the Braves, they could be a, a scary team that nobody might want to face come September or October. Yeah, that's a pretty good foundation we just seen. And imagine they add the deadline to get more help because they could still improve the lines in certain areas. Like, it's good, but like you could obviously make it better always. Or they add another starting pitcher to some out on top. And then or, or, or bullpen's pretty set now. I don't know what else they could really add in there. They have, they have three former closers in there now. Yeah, that's... I think Will Smith should get the ball, honestly, but we'll see what they end up doing. You know, that's going to be something to watch for them during the season. Yeah, it will be. Definitely will be something to monitor. Also, we have another thing. I think we're going to close the show with this. is to talk around baseball right now besides the Hall of Fame and besides the cheating. It's Nolan Arnato. Oh, he's been um, in the news a lot lately. Um, as we all know, um, He's been the center around trade talks, and he said publicly that he feels disrespected, and rightfully so. That is disrespectful. He's the best player on the uh, Rockies by far, um, mm -hmm. and they close. and they want to trade him. It's it's kind of sad. I don't understand why. There's a lot of stuff going on. Here. But but you know what? He, this could be beneficial to him too because he could land on a contender and really go for championships. So. Um, it, it's going to be interesting to see where he ends up to see if they actually do trade him. I heard something um, yesterday um, on MLB.com is that he's going to probably start the season in Colorado. And when the trade deadline happens in the summer, that's when you'll see him on the move. That So that's what I – there was a report yesterday that, that stated that the unless something drastically happens within the next couple of weeks – Expect Arenado to start the season in a Rockies uniform, but come trade deadline, he will probably be the hottest player on the move. So when was that that you looked, that you saw the update that he most likely <coughs> missed today? Yesterday. Okay, so I mean, it's a complex situation. I mean, it's probably more likely he stays, but I'm not completely ruling out a trade before the season starts, believe it or not. Neither am I. Because I think you have suitors, obviously. Of course. He may, he may or may not want to be there anymore. Oh, I don't think he wants to be there anymore. <laughs> the Rockies, basically, this is very asinine to me that the Rockies would even do this this quickly. Like, you just signed them last year, although I hear the argument that they possibly did it to um, at least get something for him instead of just losing the free agency. Like, maybe this was their plan all along. I don't know. Or they thought things would look better last season. I mean, they did make the playoffs the year before, but it's only one season. And you lost some Mayhew, you lost Alavino, you didn't really replace them. I don't know what they were really expecting. So I'm not sure what their plan is. It's hard to sell that to the fan base if Arenado gets traded. But they have an amazing park, apparently. Well, 
they do from everything I've seen. Hopefully I'll get there one day, but it's just a tough selling point to tell your best player. Yeah, it is. It's really, really, uh, it's sad too, because your best player, you want to trade him. I know there's a lot into it, but I, I, I feel for him. I, uh, that is disrespectful. He's been there his whole career, too. And Maybe he wants to finish. Well, he obviously he, did want to. Yeah, he's done nothing but succeed with them. He's done nothing but produce. Um, I don't get why you want to get rid of your best player. I don't get what merits that. I just, it, it just doesn't make a lot of sense to me. But, you know, it could benefit another team looking for a, uh, a third baseman, I'll tell you that. And I have some news on that. Go ahead. I think it's a three-team race for the services. The St. Louis Cardinals, very high on the list here. Because I've heard conflicting things. Why would they pay for Ozuna if they weren't going to? Why would they not be willing to pay Ozuna and then you want to pay Arnado? Well, maybe the reason they didn't get Ozuna is because they have a bigger thing planned and trying to get like a higher impact player. Maybe they're still in it for Arnado. They're willing to pay. They're willing to get that pairing with goals and try to make the next step because we've talked to the other teams in the league that have gone better and they really haven't for the most part. So, that to me is what I'm feeling with that. The Cardinals are a big player, in my opinion. The Texas Rangers are a big player. They missed out on the big-time free agent. They missed out on basically every free agent now. Except they did make the trade for Corey Kluber, but they're willing to add payroll. They were ready to pay Rendon, but they didn't get him. Do they view Arenado as better than Rendon? Do they view him as more worth it long-term? I don't know. Maybe they do. The other thing is how is our album going to look outside of Coors Field? But a lot of people wonder in that. That doesn't worry me as much. Although the road splits for him aren't great, but I think he would adjust. And then the Dark Horse Yankees. I think we're actually, I think we're in it. You really think so? Yeah. I mean, if the Yankees somehow were able to work that trade out. Because remember last year when the Manny Machado fiasco and the, it was reported that the <laughs> he Yankees... He still wasn't signed this time last year. My no, God, this all season so much better. No, he wasn't. It was so <laughs> it was so irritating. We were having stakeouts basically weekly saying when would he sign the Kimber Harbor. It was just like the same thing. We were getting week. annoyed with it. <laughs> it was, like, it just get tough. it over with. It was tough. It was, this year has been so much more fun. We've had new stuff to talk about basically every week. This has been the best off season ever, my hand thinking, especially seeing the Red Sox and Astros go down the flames. I absolutely love it. It's great. It's all deserved. But yeah, I don't know to the Yankees. I think we're a dark horse because I've heard rumors that there's three teams who really want to go to Dodgers, Angels, Yankees, but the Rockies won't trade in their division unless the Dodgers like give them their whole team basically. So I would count the Dodgers out. The Angels just got rent on, so let's see where they even put out and out sense they're out. Nope. So the Yankees, Rangers, or Cardinals is how I see this going down. If the Red Sox weren't in such a financial flux, I would count them in it, but there's no shot they're going to be in this. Cubs, uh, absolutely no chance. They have Chris Bryant anyway. I can't even think of any other teams that could even pay him that much, honestly. So I, I think the Yankees are a dark horse for him, especially if the Rockies are forced to trade him. Yeah, um, and another thing is is that the Yankees viewed Arenado better than Machado. They really liked him a lot more. They felt like he was a lot better than Machado, and I feel that was a, another reason why the Yankees didn't go out yeah. and aggressively sign Manny Machado, because if it was the other way around, he would be a Yankee, obviously. But <clears throat> that wasn't the case, and that's okay. Yeah, so, it's all, it all worked out. Yeah, so with our Arenado coming to the Yankees, I think if that's – a possibility, which you know what, if they can, if Brian Cashman can make it happen, I mean, I would love it. It makes the Yankees so much better. It fills a hole at third base, a legitimate, great hitter, great fielder, all around great player. So I think it will be beneficial to all parties involved to get that done. But those three teams, Yankees, Cardinals, and Rangers, definitely. I, I don't think there's anybody else. Involved in that, that that was uh, spot on. I actually have one dark horse that just came up in my head. I think you'll agree with this one. Let's hear it. Phillies. Uh, yeah. Imagine that, Arenado and Harper. I guess Arenado. Braves too, even though they just signed with Zuna because yeah. they were previously in it. But I don't think with Zuna they'll add all that right now. I mean, I could be wrong, but I just think that there's a slight chance. I wouldn't expect the Yankees to get it done, but if they trade half 
in X, and they add maybe another, oh man, it doesn't work exactly. I think I'm trying to play math in my head with the salary cap a little bit. But if they do X and half, that would be like 27. I don't know, that's 30. And then if they added like something else, maybe like a reliever or something, like Chad Green, maybe even Alvino, as much as I hate to see him go, I would do that to get Arnado and the Yankees. I also think Miguel and Duhar would be in that trade, obviously, because you would have no place for him anymore. Shell, I feel like, would stay and play utility role. Well, I could be wrong. But if they want Gio or and Duhar or both, you don't even sneeze at that. You send both of them to Colorado, you thank them for the services, and you bring Arnado back. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Not bad. That's just how that would go. Yeah. Because <laughs> he's just that good, obviously. Yes, he is. Great player. So I think we're just about good here. This is a We filled in a lot of stuff. We had to catch up with everyone. A lot of stuff's been going on. Baseball's fun again. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I guess the last... And it's fastly approaching. Yes. we got 64 days for opening day. Yes, I'm counting every day. We have less than three weeks till spring training, almost touch more actually I'm just a little antsy so I'm trying to make the day shorter I guess but it's a touch more than three weeks I'll be down there I'm going to try to get some coverage we're going to try to get some live Yankees coverage stuff the game up this year trying to expand the network and everything we're going to talk about this behind the scenes with Bobby it's also going to be doing this thing with football soon which we're going to shift to we might have a little thing about Eli Manning because he retired tonight we're going to see what's going on later but other than that I think I'm set follow us at GT Sports Talk 2 Twitter and Instagram Subscribe to our channel, GMT Sports Talk on YouTube. Also, find us on Apple Podcasts. It's the same thing. My personal Twitter is Julian Barty1. If you guys want to follow, I talk about a lot of the stuff I talk about on the show. You can just find it on Twitter and everything, and I'll relate to a lot of stuff I see from there that's relevant. So, that's all I got. My personal Twitter is BTOMS81. I'm the football guy. You want football stuff, come to me. So, anything you need with that, with free agency coming up. In the next two months after the Super Bowl, I'll have that all coverage. All that will be on me, on my uh, personal account. Yeah, totally. So, and <clears throat> excuse me. so with this suggestion of GT Sports Talk, I'm Bobby Thompson. I'm Julian Guardi, we'll see everyone soon. Damn. Damn, that was over 40 minutes. Shit, I don't even know if I'm going to do this video. I'm gonna have to cut it or some shit.